The non-fund payroll or NFP is one of the most watched economic indicators by traders and investors as it provides insight into the health of the US labor market. Released on the first Friday of each month, the NFP reports tracks the change in the number of employees excluding farm employees, government employees, and non-profit organizations. It is widely followed by economists, investors, and policymakers and can have a significant impact on the financial markets. In this video, you'll learn about the origin of the NFP, how the data is collected and calculated, and what the key numbers in the report mean. We'll also explore how traders and investors use the information from the NFP to make their investment decisions. If you're interested in this infographic, check out the link in the video description below. First. What is the NFP and its origin? The non-farm payroll is a measure of the change in the number of employees, excluding farm employees, government employees, private household employees, and employees of non-profit organizations in the US during the previous month. It is, a, it is widely considered as a key indicator of strength of the US labor market and is released by the Bureau of Labor Statistics or BRS on the first Friday of each month. The NFP report has its origin in the early 20th century when the US government started collecting data on employment and labor force characteristics. The NFP report was established as a regular monthly release in the 1940s and has since become an important economic indicator used by economists, investors, and policymakers to assess the health of the US economy. So how is this data calculated? The NFP data is collected and tabulated by the BRS, which is a branch of the US Department of Labor. The BRS uses two surveys to calculate the NFP, the Establishment Survey and the Household Survey. The Establishment Survey, also known as the Payroll Survey, collects data from a sample of approximately 141,000 businesses and government agencies and covers roughly one-third of all non-farm employment in the US. The survey collects data on the number of employees on payrolls and the number of hours worked by each employee. On the other hand, the household survey, also known as the survey of households, collects data from a sample of approximately 60,000 households and covers the remaining two-thirds of non-farm employment in the US. The survey collects information on the employment status of individuals, including those who are unemployed and looking for work. The NFP data is calculated as the difference between the total number of employed persons in the Establishment Act and the Household Survey in the current month compared to the previous month. So this NFP data is also seasonally adjusted to account for regular patterns in the labor market such as seasonal hiring during the holidays. So what are the key numbers of the NFP report? The non fund payroll report released by the BRS contains a number of important data points that traders and investors pay attention to. Firstly, the non-farm payroll employment itself. This is the main number of the NFP report and is a measure of the change in the number of non-farm jobs in the US during the previous month. A positive number indicates job growth while a negative number indicates job losses. Next is the unemployment rate. This is the percentage of labor force that is unemployed but actively seeking work. A lower unemployment rate is typically seen as a sign of a strong labor market, while a higher unemployment rate is seen as a sign of weakness. Next, we have the average hourly earnings. This measures the average pay per hour of all non-farm employees and is an important indicator of wage growth and inflationary pressures. A significant increase in average hourly earnings can signal an increase in inflation which can lead to higher interest rates and a stronger US dollar. Next is the participation rate. This is the percentage of civilian non-institutionalized population that is either employed or actively seeking work. A lower participation rate can indicate a lack of job opportunities, while a higher participation rate can indicate a strong labor market. Next is the average work week. This measures the number of hours worked per week by all non-farm employees. A decrease in the average work week can indicate a slowdown in economic activity while an increase can signal economic strength. 
Each of these data points provides valuable information about the state of the US labor market and economy, and traders and investors often pay close attention to them when making investment decisions. However, the relative importance of each number will vary depending on the current economic conditions and the outlook for future growth. So how is this data relevant to traders and investors? The NFP data is relevant to traders and investors because it provides valuable information about the state of the US labor market as well as the overall economy. A strong NFP report, meaning an increase in the number of non-farm payrolls, is often seen as a positive sign of a growing economy and can lead to increased demand for stocks and a stronger US dollar. On the other hand, a weak NFP report, meaning a decrease in the number of non-farm payroll jobs, is often seen as a negative sign of a slowing economy and can lead to decreased demand for stocks and a weaker US dollar. Therefore, it makes sense that traders and investors pay close attention to the NFD data so that they can adjust their portfolio in response to the report. For example, if the NFP report shows strong job growth, traders and investors may increase their investment in stocks while if, they sh if it shows a weak job growth, then they will decrease uh, their stock investment and instead shift their investment to safer assets such as bonds. In addition to the overall level of job growth, traders and investors also pay attention to other details of the NFP report such as the average hourly earnings and the unemployment rate because these data points can provide further insight into the health of the US economy and the direction of future monetary policy which will in turn impact the financial markets. Next, let's do a deep dive on how these individual factors can affect the market. Here are some specific examples of how the traders might use each of these data points from the NFP report to make their trading decisions. First is the non-farm payroll employment. So traders use the non-farm payroll employment number to assess the overall health of the US labor market and economy. So for example, if the NFP report shows strong job growth, traders might see this as a positive sign and increase their investment in stocks as a growing economy is generally seen as supportive of corporate profits. On the other hand, if the NFP report shows weak job growth, traders might decrease their investment in stocks and look for safer assets such as bonds like we mentioned earlier. Next is the unemployment rate. Traders may use the unemployment rate to assess the strength of the labor market and the potential for future interest rate changes. For example, if the unemployment rate is low and declining, traders might expect the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates in order to keep inflation in check. This could lead to a stronger US dollar and a decrease in demand for riskier assets such as stocks. Next is the average hourly earnings. Traders might use the average hourly earnings data to assess inflationary pressure as well and the potential for future rate changes. So for example, if the average hourly earnings are rising faster than expected, then traders might expect the Fed to increase interest rates uh, which will then lead to a stronger use the US dollar and in turn uh, weaker stocks as well. Next is the participation rate. Traders might use the participation rate to assess the health of the labor market as well and the potential for future economic growth. So for example, if the participation rate is falling, traders might see this as a sign of a weak labor market and decrease their investment in risky assets. On the other hand, if participation rate is increasing, then uh, traders might see this as a sign of a strong labor market and increase their investment in risk assets. Lastly is the average work week. So uh, if the average work week is increasing, then traders might see this as a sign of a strong economy and increase their investment in risk assets. So conversely, if the average work week is declining, then traders see this as a sign of a weak economy and might decrease their investments in risk assets. So it's important to note that these examples are quite general and traders might also consider other factors such as broader economic and market conditions when making investment decisions. Additionally, the impact of NFP data on financial markets can vary depending on expectations and the magnitude of the surprise in the report. So here are my concluding thoughts. In summary, the NFP or non-farm payroll report provides 
valuable information about the state of the US labor market and by extension, the overall economy. Whether you are a seasoned trader or just starting out, understanding the NFP is crucial to making informed investment decisions. Traders and investors pay close attention to the NFP data, including the non-farm payroll employment, unemployment rate, average hourly earnings, participation rate, and average work week, and adjust their portfolio in response to the report. Now that I've covered all about the importance of the NFP report, is it something that you will add to your trading toolbox? Let me know in the comments below. And if you have enjoyed this video, do remember to like and subscribe and to hit the bell notification icon to receive the latest updates. That's it for this video and I'll see you in the next one.